Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, dedicated section on feedback loops while we have talked about them here and there in this course on systems thinking. So in this uh, section we will try and give you an in-depth view of the feedback loops while we have talked about it quite often uh, and in this lecture particularly we will lay out the whole process of uh, how to identify the feedback loops and also explain a couple of steps in this, right? Right. So the feedback loops uh, are there in the system and system involves such feedback loops where the output of the system, one part of the system or full of the whole of the system circles back to influence its own, its inputs. Now these feedback loops can be what is called positive feedback loop as you see here or a balancing feedback loop and we and that leads to system behavior that may amplify or stabilize over time and we have talked about it in earlier lectures right so the question that we will address in this uh, lecture is how to identify these feedback loops is there a process is there a systematic way of identifying that let's take a look at that so Identifying feedback loops in the system involves recognize, recognizing what is called recurring patterns of interactions. So it's all about identifying such recurring patterns or interactions where the output uh, of a process influences its own behavior or behavior of related processes. And how can you identify such feedback loops? Let's take a look at that. So let us take a look at the steps that you can take to identify these feedback loops. What you need to begin with is the understand the concept, feedback concept in that particular situation. While we understand the concept in general of feedback loop that it is when it, a recurring pattern that happens when the output of one part of the process feeds back into the process or related processes. But in that context, we need to understand and when we give you an example at the end of this section, we will explain this, what is, what is exactly meant by understanding feedback concepts. Next, you need to analyze the system components and again, we will talk about that as we go forward. Then you look for the recurring pattern because that's all these feedback loops are about, right? And then you trace the cause and effect relationships uh, as we would have, we will explain as we go forward. And then use in that you use causal loop diagrams and we will talk about how can you use causal loop diagrams then you look for self-reinforcing or self-correcting mechanisms in the process and then you in that whole thing you consider time delays and analyze system behavior and validate the finding so these are the various steps that you need to take to identify these feedback loops so well, let's take a look at the first two steps in the remaining part of this lecture and then we will look at uh, other parts as we go forward. So we will look at as we go forward now and how to understand the feed, what is meant by understanding feedback concepts and analyzing system components. So the understanding feedback concept basically means familiarizing yourself with the concept of feedback in the system this, that you are studying. Now, a feedback occurs when an output of a system, part of the system, influences its own behavior or behavior of other components in the system. And as we have already said, uh, that there are two types of feedbacks, positive and negative. So, where the positive reinforces the input and the negative uh, counteracts the input. So this is how, this is what we need to understand. Where is this happening in the system is what you need to see when you start identifying feedback loops. Next thing you need to do is to analyze these system components. You have laid out the system, you have identified components earlier, mapped them out visually. So is analysis required now. And what you do there is you break down system into an individual components. If you've already not done that, most probably this won't be required, but you need to at least be aware of that. You need to identify the system components, processes and variables and identify those components, how they interact with each other and how changes in one component affects other. And we had covered in a lot of detail in the earlier sections 
uh, and I'm just reproducing the summary chart that we had said and you can go back and take a look at that in the earlier sections. So there the steps involved was to identify system components that we talked about, they map out the relationship, identify the causal relationship, dependencies and then we had also talked about feedback loops which is where we are talking about it and then you visualize these relationships. And then you analyze these interactions and we had talked about how to analyze there and iterate and define. So that's how you can analyze the system components. So what do we do next? So in the next lecture, we will look at this whole thing of how to look for recurring patterns that can help us identify the feedback loops that we are looking for in the system. So thank you so much for, uh, for watching this uh, the first lecture on feedback loops. I hope you're continuing to learn new things, continuing to enjoy. And I do look forward to see you again in the next lecture. Please feel free to message me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And also download the PDF file to take a look at anything specifically, especially the chart on what I had shown you that you can go back and look at in earlier sections on how to analyze uh, the components interaction.